Hi, I'm Femi O.K. and you're in the stream. Today is women's football in Africa at a turning point. We have an all-star lineup and we'll be talking about growing the sport in popularity, bigger prize money and increasing participation on the international stage by some of Africa's finest football players. I'm Athana Kaze and I'm a fan of African women's football because it's exceptional. There's a lot of talent, there's a lot of skill. And I watch it because that is how I show up. I want to contribute towards the development and the growth of women's football. And I feel like we are at that stage in Africa where the girls have evolved. And that's how I show up. Our starting lineup today, Janine, Usher, Tenvi, Desiree, what an all-star cast of players. Thank you so much. Janine, please introduce yourself to our global audience. Hello everyone, I'm Janine Anthony. I'm a broadcaster and founder of Ladies Match that does everything African women's football. I'm happy to be a starting starter here on AJ Street. Oh, same here. <laughs> Hello, Asha. Welcome to the stream. Introduce yourself. Thank you so much for having me, Femi. My name is Asha Kongisha. I am an African football expert, even though I cover football across the world. Fantastic. Hello, Tenvi. Congratulations, Viana Viana. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you're muted you're after all of that fanfare you are muted unmute yourself tenby one more time go for hi, it hello hi, I'm and i'm an african champion oh my goodness the coach with the most hello desiree welcome to the stream tell everybody who you are what you do <laughs> good evening everyone um my name is desiree alice i'm the head coach of banyana and banyana and I'm also an African champion. All right, congratulations. All right, we are talking about the state of women's football on the African continent. You can be in that conversation as well. What do you want to know about African football from a women's perspective? How is the sport doing? Comment section right here, be part of today's show. I'm gonna show you a picture of Desiree working quite recently at the Women's African Cup of Nations. Desiree, what were you doing here? What was going through your head? That is a moment when I'm not happy. <laughs> when I'm not happy and I'm just looking and seeing where I can contribute. Um, you know, Tim is laughing because she knows exactly what, what that picture looks like. <laughs> Tembi, Tembi, when your coach looks like this, what, what is she yelling out at the players? It depends. It depends on what we have done. Yeah. Uh, but I think it, it would be a moment where she's expect, expecting us to be, you know, scoring or in a moment where we're supposed to not be getting a goal against. So I, I know that look and it's not a really good look. Yeah. So we, we go from serious Desiree, very serious here, to this Desiree. Articulate that smile, those thoughts, that energy. It was... It was a moment that I, it's very difficult to describe when you have just become an African champion where so many things are going through your mind, where you're actually showing people back home and thanking them for the support, thanking any, everyone that have supported you. And I still have a very big smile. I can't stop smiling. Um, I sometimes sleep with my middle right next to me and I want to pinch myself. You know, is this really true? It's something that we have worked for for the last four years and it's finally come true. So yeah. it's something that you, you almost tell someone, pinch me, pinch me. So I am thinking, Usher and Janine, this moment here where there was so much pride from South Africans that their national female football team came out as champions. What does that mean? Is there a bigger meaning to where football is on the African continent for women? Usher, you start. Well, honestly, when you think about the investment that South Africa as a country has, uh, you know, put into women's football over the years, and especially in the last 30 years, it's only befitting that uh, they won this year's WAFCON. It's a story that replicates and, and that shows that there are no shortcuts to success. Mm -hmm. For a very long time, South Africa was the almost team, you know, but finally they turned on that switch and, you know, you could feel, even at halftime, Desiree knows, you could feel that 
you know, South Africa have an edge on Morocco in that final. And um, I'm so happy for everyone that uh, has contributed to that journey. It's just a clear message, you know, out there that um, you have to invest. And when you invest in women's football, you'll get the results. It's just as simple as that. Janine, I'm just wondering about who the best female football teams are on the African continent. Can you do one, two, three, four for us, please? Uh, the best football teams on the continent, Nigeria, South Africa, Queens. Um, at the moment, Morocco and edging that as well, Zambia. Cameroon fans will not like what I've said. Oh, OK. So in the last few years, there has been real strategy, real efforts to improve African football for women. Tembi, what have you seen? What difference is it now as a player on the African continent? because of this fourth right, Tem Tembi, we'll come back to you. We need to do some playing around with your headphones and we'll come right back to you. Um, let me just pass that along to your coach. Desiree, what's changed in the last few years? There has been a campaign, a strategy from the Confederation of African Football to really bring up the state of women's football on the African continent. What have you seen? Well, I think it started with the CAF Women's Champions League coming on board. I think that was a huge shift, was a huge change. Um, you can see the shift in the clubs now, everyone wanting to win that league, to go out and test themselves. With regards to WEFCON, um, it was an amazing WEFCON, well organized. I mean, if you look at the, the, the stadium that was packed out for the final, um, Rocco organized a really fantastic tournament. I also looked at, um, you know, all the new club, uh, new countries that have come on board, and none of them went any way, you know. Um, the scores were, were not that big. So everybody has gone out and, and done their work. Um, a lot of investment has been done by Morocco. And they were, they, that's, that's, uh, they're not in the, were in the final by chance, you know. They put in a lot of investment. You look at the, the youth teams also going to the, to the World Cup, the men's teams going to the World Cup. And um, that, that's when you put in the investment. You look, Mali was not there. Um, Equatorial Guinea was not there. And you had, you had four deputants, and in no way were they out of place in the competition either. Um, so refereeing as well has, has, has come on board, improved. We even have a female referee going to the Men's World Cup, and I think she was fantastic in the final as well. Mm -hmm. The organization, the administrators, they've all stepped up a level. I am going to bring in Barbara Banda here. Barbara Banda is um, been talking about the development of the game in Africa for women's football. This is Barbara talking. She's, she's a, a Zambian footballer. This is Barbara talking two years ago. And then, Janine, I'm going to come off the back of you and, and just wondering if things have got even better since Barbara said this. Here she is. Most of the African players, women, are now playing abroad. Everyone wants to work hard and play professional football. I think now, it's now people coming to know that, okay, African football is also there, at the, they are on the other level. So I think it's up to us as women to commit ourselves to whatever we want to do. Confidence there, but are the players ready to go on to a bigger stage that goes outside of the African continent? If you were truly honest, Janine, what else is needed? What is needed is improving our stage in Africa. I mean, Nigeria had won this nine times. Up until the last few years, the Nigerian Women's Premier League at this point in time is one of the oldest women's league, football league in the world. So I... We will come back to Janine because we've just lost her. She's just frozen there. So I'm going to just throw that question across to Usher. Usher, help me pick up here. What else is needed to improve the sport, not just in one part of the continent, but all over so that we've got a continent-wide game for women that is really worth watching and spectacular and brings up the young people as well? It's interesting you ask this question. Um, four years ago in 2018 in Marrakesh in Morocco, um, I was very honoured to be part of uh, 
a working group uh, that was at the CAF Women's Football Symposium, the very first of its kind. And in this workshop that had all, you know, administrators and everyone who's very passionate about women's football from the African continent came together to put up a strategy. And this strategy, one of the first things that it did was to have a women's football department at uh, the Confederation of African Football in Egypt. And in this department, you have people who wake up every day to think about women's football. Mm -hmm. That means creating programs for female referees, um, creating programs for you know female coaches, and then working together with the regional associations. And when I say regional, um, for example, South Africa is in the Kosafa uh, region, which is in the southern part of, uh, of Africa. And uh, you're talking about you know East Africa, which is Sekafa. WAFU, which is West African um, region, is A and B. And then you have UNAF, which is North Africa, and UNIFAC, which is Central Africa. So when you have consistently tournaments, you know, for under 17, mm -hmm. under 20 girls, and you have um, a yearly competition for the senior national teams, this, you know, brings together players and they continue to get this exposure that then can be transformed into the national team at the end of the day. And that has played a huge role in uh, getting, you know, teams to understand what it means to compete at the highest level. We can talk about COSAFA to be very specific, where South Africa and Banyana Banyana are. And in this region, it's not by mistake that two teams from COSAFA made it to the semifinals. Mm. You have South Africa and Zambia. And also Botswana, who were playing for the very first time, got to the quarterfinals, you know. So this kind of setup helps everyone holistically. And specifically for COSAFA, who have insisted for the past couple of years that for you to come to the COSAFA tournament, you have to have a female head coach. Right. And that right. sort of brings perspective to the whole development, um, uh, you know, program. All right, I've got some YouTube questions here. Um, Desiree, I see you nodding, so I'm just going to pick up with some of the questions from our audience. So Zubaida says that today's topic is really essential, especially after watching the UEFA Women's League. Attendance wasn't impressive until the finals. Football fans in Africa have to patronise the women's games. Desiree, thoughts on that? Look, um, it was only Morocco that had... Um uh, packed out stadiums uh, for the rest of the competition. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really packed out. And I think um, if we're talking about supporting, we also need to support in the stands. Um, you know, people are passionate, but they need to support in the stands because it's not just on the field where the game needs to grow. It's off the field where the game needs to grow as well. But I think um, after this WAFCON, I think um, there'll be more um, fans in the stadium. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to add as well is if we need to improve on the African continent, I think CAF needs to make sure that all MAs have structured leagues. And if, then the next step after that is to professionalize the sport because mm -hmm. we can only compete with the rest of the world if we are doing similar things to the rest of the world. And at the moment, most of the leagues in Africa is played on an amateur basis where players work and train after work, where teams maybe practice twice a, twice a yeah. week, and that is not enough. I feel I've got, I've got, I'm bringing Janine back into the conversation. Janine, I've got a YouTube question, which I know that you'll be able to answer here. AK says, improve the officiating. I stop watching. Well, that is a shame. But is the officiating so bad on some games that the women have to play on the African continent that people would stop watching, Janine? People are always going to have reasons. Um, improve the quality of football. Then they're doing, like, fantastic formations and quality play that Desri and the likes do. And then there's one more complaint. Um, you are never going to win when it comes to fans um, and, and, and wanting that. But it's a valid concern. That should not be the reason why tens of thousands of young girls in Africa will not get the opportunity to showcase exactly what they have and the investment that's put into them because of a handful of people. And that's what CAF needs to improve. What it does need to improve is not make the biggest stage of women's football or women's sports on the continent the learning curve for mistakes to be done. If that is improved, we win fans like um, I'm, I'm the commenter on YouTube and many more. But there is a step and that can be improved for sure. I should go ahead. Let me just share this with you, Tembi. This is, these are your, your, your um, footy mates here. And I love this video, okay? This is a celebration video of, of you and your teammates here. And the dance is on fire. I am wondering though, when you are in the locker rooms and you're talking about certain issues, does pay parity come up, Tembi? 
because Banyala Banyana has done better than the Bafana Bafana, which is the male's football team. You've brought glory back to South Africa, extraordinary football <clears throat> players, but you don't get paid the same amount. Thoughts? The first question I have right now is to everyone uh, watching this interview or this panel discussion. What else should women footballers do in order to get recognition? Uh, like Janine said, Nigeria is the best crowned uh, women's team in Africa. And the state of women's football in Nigeria hasn't even reached what the national team represents. Uh, yes, in South Africa, we just have the newly launched Hollywood bet, but still that doesn't represent uh, what the national team, you know, play and what we just did now with, the, with, with Banyana bringing Afcon back. So that's the one question I really have, like what more should women teams or women footballers have to do in order to be taken seriously? And this goes out to federations, to sponsors, to even families, because I know in other countries, girls are not allowed to play football. Girls are not allowed to do certain sports. What else are we supposed to do? Why are we being put in this box of what we can do and what we can't do? It's amazing, Tembi, that in 2022, there's still sexism involved in women's sport, and particularly in football. How do you combat that? How do you tackle that? Uh, it, it's a very difficult question, but I think from where I'm standing, we just need to perform. We just need to be ourselves. And eventually, you know, the world cannot ignore us for a very long time. Uh, we look at the Champions League or the European matches where the best, you know, stadiums were filled. Not even men could fill up the stadium. So someone has to, you know, take charge and, and be able to say, no, we, it's time we need to support women footballers. It's time we need to bring a lot of opportunities for women footballers. And it's, it's the same in Africa. We saw everywhere the AFCON is being held, stadiums being full. Uh, Coach Des did mention that in Morocco, some matches, there were, there were no people watching, but only when the home team was playing. So how do we make programs where other teams can go to different countries to support? Because it's not only, you know, finances that have to stop. I mean, can cannot the, the sponsors in the countries be building um an an area where that people can be able to put in and fund so that when it's time for big tournaments you have support the team feels they have support then we don't have to rely on the local you know fans to only go support their team sure yes i feel like there's at the moment with uh, caf the confederation of african football that there's a carrot and a stick approach okay so the carrot approach is the four qualifiers from the Women's African Cup of Nations, they get to go to the World Cup, like, boom, they're there. And then the stick approach is if you don't have a female football team, you can't enter their competitions as a male football team. That is intense and bold. Let me bring in another idea for how there can be more coaches, more women in the game of football on the African continent. And this is from a coach called Easy and she coaches A.S. Kigali. Here she is in February of this year. What motivated me to become a coach was the government's policy of encouraging women to take an interest in sports, especially soccer. The women who were high up in the government were leading by example on the field, and we were following. So I became a coach. Desiree, there's, there's almost like a, a two-point approach to how you get the game of football for women on the African continent up to a certain standard, how to keep it growing. Have you seen that idea of the government helping, funding the women's game? Is that helpful? I think that is very helpful. I also think that, um, you know, you need to put yourselves out there, but the biggest thing is being given the opportunity um, I remember Algeria had a female coach, um, now they've got a male coach, um, Uganda had a female coach, you know, so it's been giving that opportunity and trusting them. And, and that is what COSAFA does well. They implement that the, mm -hmm. that the female coach must, 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 the head coach must be a female, um, even if you have a male coach assisting. And in that way, the coach is getting experience, but it's been given that opportunity, that trust. And I think not many FAs are doing that. And I think it's important because when you look around the continent, there are many quality female coaches, but they're not being given an opportunity. And our federation took a bold step 
to, you know, um, uh, give opportunities to, to all our national teams. Our U17 is coached by a uh, former captain, um, Simpiwe Dludlu. Our U20 is coached by a former player, uh, Jabulile Boloi. And we uh, sort of interact all the time. But it's being given that opportunity. But I think when I look at it, the narrative is changing. There's a competition in Cape Town called the Coca-Cola Cup. And before, you've got the under-18 boys, you've got senior women and senior men. And the senior women's prize money was less than the U18 boys. But all of a sudden, the prize money has jumped, and it's now the same prize money as the male team. So, but we don't realize the magnitude of our victory, how things have changed, and how things are going to change. Uh, also, you, the uh, UNISA in university in South Africa has now given bursaries to all 23 players that qualified, you know, uh, that uh, won the, the WEFCON. So slowly but surely, things are changing, but I agree with Tembi. I don't know what more we have to do, what more we have to do to get the sponsors coming on board. Mm -hmm. And maybe somebody who works in sponsorship, who regularly goes out and looks for sponsorship for women in sport, can tell us what is missing. Janine, let me put this one I, to I, you. I, I, I just wanted to say something. <laughs> all right. Uh, Usher goes first, and then Janine, you go second. Make it, make it brief, ladies. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'll go first. So for me, I never really get to understand um, the issue about uh, the difference in pay because here's the thing if a player and a coach and an entire team is representing a country the source of funds is the government because you're wearing in this case for example you're wearing the South African flag you're wearing the Zambian flag so why is it that the women are not getting the same amount as the men Asha, and, you and can no answer your own question. Don't just ask that, ask that question. You can answer it because... <laughs> it's, a rhetoric, it's a rhetoric question. Because you know? and I'm sexism. Mm -hmm. next, next question. All right. Uh, there you go. Janine. Yeah, you, you knew the answer to that. Janine, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to tell um, um, Desri and, and Tembi that women don't need to do anything. You've mm. done the work. Do not Interesting. do anything. You're not the one that FIFA gives the, the, the millions of dollars every other year for women's football development. Before the Women's Africa Cup of Nations, every country that came to the Women's Cup of Nations, they didn't do enough marketing within the country for people to even fly from their countries to the stadium to fill the, 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 the stands, apart from the people who lived in Morocco. That needs to improve. Cap does its job. The FAs and the countries need to do theirs. So don't do anything, women. Sit down at Queen's. Do nothing. Some interesting thoughts here from YouTube. Um, Guy is not impressed with women's soccer. Guy, what century are you living in? And then we've got Mlanguk uh, Sponsors need to come to the party and support the ladies. Emmanuel. Emmanuel? Fantastic. Yes, women's football is rapidly gaining momentum in Africa. This is highly appreciative for African women and the African continent as a whole. Costas, whoever loves soccer knows very well what African women with that sport can do. It can be profitable as well. They should have done it already. There's a thought here, Tembi, about what you want for the younger generation coming up. If you had to leave them with one piece of advice or inspiration, what would you tell them, Tembi? My advice to the young ones would be to first look for opportunities and yeah. if you don't have opportunities, go to school because women's football is growing and everywhere you'll be, school will always be there. And, and I think it's one thing that in Africa as a whole, yeah. we, we can look at, you know, football goes hand in hand with school. So if you won't be able to be a, a person that goes to school, you won't be able to develop Thank yourself you as a be. footballer. Thank you, Tembi and Desiree and Usher and Janine for talking about women's football on the African continent. I'm going to leave you with two journalists who are very encouraged about where the sport is right now, Izam and Julie. My favourite player is Tagnaut Fatima, fast and effective player who makes an exceptional game with the national team worker. I think that her talent and her level of play deserve to play in Europe. I found the Women African Cup showed a very good level to make us very proud uh, or our continent. Women football does change perceptions and stereotypes that have been held for so long, you know, about what women can do, African women can do, and what African girls can do, and what they cannot do. And so what women football does best is show us, you know, women can do almost anything they want to put their minds to, you know. 
This show has been produced by Maya Gard. She is the senior producer of the stream. I don't normally tell you who produces the stream because it is a team effort, like women's football. It takes a whole team, but there's always an MVP, and that most valuable player is senior producer Maya Garg, whose last show is today. Thank you, Maya Garg. You're spectacular. We wish you every success for where you go to next. Good luck. <laughs>